All right, so let's look at what a polynomial function actually is. So here we're given that f of x, which means a function, is equal to a sub n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, blah, 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 blah. Here what we actually have is a bunch of terms, okay, and just saying that it can be as big as you need it to be, where a sub n Okay, and all following are real numbers. And notice that these are your coefficients. These are numbers that are in front of your variable, which also include your constant. Okay, so those are all real numbers. And n is a non-negative integer. So it's talking about the exponents. Your exponents need to be non-negative integers. So they need to be positive. Okay, and they need to be integers. So uh, you can't have any decimals or fractions in there. Uh, and we also need to know that the degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent that you have out of everything. So just by th the definition, we can actually go ahead and ask you some questions. So let's take a look. All right, so let's see if you can do this before I show you. Look at the definition again and see if you can pick out which of these are polynomials and which aren't. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. All right, so let's take a look at each one. This one is a polynomial function. Its degree is 4. Uh, it seems to satisfy everything that we have as part of the definition. This one, let's simplify it a little bit more. This one actually says x to the power of 1 over 2. Okay, that's part of the definitions for the square roots. So this is not a an integer, so this is not a polynomial function. This one is a ratio of functions, okay? And the highest degree is in the denominator, so this is gonna end up being a fraction. This is not a polynomial function. This one is, okay? If, we, if you look at the whole definition, this is considered a constant and our constant here is just zero, that's okay. And likewise here, for g of x equal to eight, this is also a polynomial function. If we are, I guess if we were writing the whole thing out, we can say that this would be the same as writing eight to the x to the zero power. And notice that here, that would just simplify to one and you get the same thing here again. So this is considered a polynomial function. Here we need to do some simplifying. Okay, so let me see what I get here. I have this to a power, so I'm going to take care of this first. Here I end up getting x squared minus 2x plus 1. Distributing this, I get negative 2x to the fifth plus 4x to the fourth minus 2x to the third. And here, this seems to satisfy everything we said earlier for the definition. And the highest degree here is 5. So this is a polynomial of degree 5. All right, what if they just give you graphs, though? And they say, OK, is this graph from a polynomial function? Well, let's look at what the graphs for all the polynomial functions should look like. They should all be smooth and continuous. They might not be the prettiest of things, but they kind of smooth it out. So uh, something could look like this. Okay. So I would say that, yeah, this looks pretty smooth and it continues. But what does it look like when it's not from a polynomial function? We could have something that might you know, come down and very sharply turn back down. This is called a cusp. Okay, so as soon as you see a cusp, this is not a polynomial function. You can also have gaps. Notice that uh, here, it jumped from here to here. It didn't continue, so this is considered not from a polynomial function. Or likewise, if you have gaps. So let's say this number is not part of an answer. 
uh, that makes it that will create a hole and it would not be from a polynomial function. Okay, if you think back to the example where we had the fraction and I asked you if it was a polynomial function or not, the answer was no because it was a ratio. Now you have to remember that in a ratio you cannot have a denominator that is equal to zero. So by doing that you'll actually find out where it's equal to zero and it will create a hole. So what it happens there is that it'll make a hole and it's therefore is not considered a polynomial function. So let's look at some more stuff. All right, you should have these functions memorized by now. If you haven't, or you didn't write it down in your class, go ahead and copy this table down. So the first function we'll look at is one that has no degree, okay, and it will look like this, f of x is equal to zero. This is called the zero function, and it actually graphs the x-axis. When the degree is zero, it looked like this, f of x is equal to a sub zero, and that's called the constant function, and it ends up being a horizontal line, and the horizontal line will be wherever this number is. When the degree is one, it's one that we should be really familiar with. That one is our linear functions. Okay, so those are all the straight lines, and this looks like in the form f of x is equal to a sub one x plus a uh, zero, and these are always going to be non-vertical and non-horizontal lines with slope equal to your a sub 1. Now you might be more familiar with it in the form y is equal to mx plus b, but it's the exact same thing. This has changed the name a little bit around here, but it's the same thing. The next one we should also be familiar with our quadratic function, where quadratic has a degree of two, and we should know that the parabola will open up if a2 is greater than zero, and will open down if a2 is smaller than zero. And three, our third degree, our, those are our cubic functions. And when those look like you should have completely memorized by now, most college algebra books have in their index somewhere what all of these functions look like in case you haven't graphed them yet. So let's try some problems out. And I want you to tell me what degree these examples are in. All right, so go ahead and take a look at these six problems. And I want you to tell me yes or no, these are polynomial functions, and if they are, tell me what degree they are in. So pause the video, and I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. All right, take a look at the answers. I hope you got them right. Now, I would like to do uh, both H's. Yeah, I think the other ones are kind of self-explanatory. This one is raised to a fraction of a power. We don't do that, or a rational exponent. Now here, even though this is pi, it's just a coefficient, so it's not a big deal. Let's take a look at the h's. When we take a look at this one, we, this seems to have a, a power of 1, but it actually doesn't. When you have a denominator, it actually has a power of a negative, okay? Uh, this is from the exponent rules. So this actually says 1 minus x to the negative first power, okay? And notice that it's not a positive integer, so that's not one of the, one of the rules we're going to have for polynomials. Let's look at h. H says the following, 2 times blah, 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 blah. What we need to do is simplify this further to see if this is actually a polynomial. And so we'll go ahead and expand this. Okay. And when I distribute everything, I'll get that my highest power should come from multiplying these two which is going to end up being x to the fourth, and that'll be your highest degree.
So, like I said, I hope you got them right. Sophie, what are you doing? Um, pictures. You like those pictures? Yeah. Who's in them?